Hey guys, Virtus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 beginner tutorial series. And in today's episode, we're going to be adding in the functionality for our main menu system. Now, if you take a quick look in the view of, on my screen here, you can see exactly what we've been creating over the last two videos. So far, we've set up the layout, we've got the styling done, and hopefully at this point you should have a, a screen similar to this, complete with buttons and some, ho um, you know, hover effects and it looks quite nice. Now as of right now we don't have any functionality and hopefully that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be showing you how to make a change between screens for the options screen, go back to the menu, you know just turning on and off the visibility for this stuff, changing the resolution, quitting the game and lastly you know loading a level once you press the start game button. It's kind of simple, it's kind of easy to do, just make sure you hang on tight and follow along. Now if you haven't watched the previous two episodes on main menu creation, I advise you go ahead and do so using the thumbnails on the left hand side now. But anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and show you exactly how we can add all of this functionality. At this point we're pretty much almost finished with our main menu, there's very little left to do. So. If you have a quick look at my screen here, let's go ahead and see how we can sort this. So the first thing we're going to try and do is toggle the visibility for the main menu set of buttons and the options set of buttons. It's quite simple, if you have a quick look in here, you should be able to see there is a visibility section so we can turn stuff on and off and we can do all of that inside of blueprints. So what we're going to do is, when the player presses the options button, it's going to go ahead and toggle off. Uh, toggle the visibility for the main menu buttons and set that to hidden and then toggle the visibility for the options buttons and set that to visible. It's quite simple, let's go ahead and show you how to do it. The first thing we're going to do though is because by default we don't want the options screen shown, we're just going to go ahead and select the options box, the vertical box that we made with all the buttons for the uh, options stuff inside of it, we're going to set the default visibility to hidden. So if I go ahead and press play, you won't see it on the screen and that's perfect. So the next thing we need to do then is go ahead and set up the button for uh, setting up the functionality for turning all of this on and off. So if we go ahead and click the options button and if we go down here you can see we've got a couple of events on clicked, on pressed and on released. So what we're going to do is when the button is clicked we're going to go ahead and fire off a bit of blueprint script. So the first thing we're going to do is type in visibility if I could spell properly that is. There we go, set visibility and what we're going to do is go ahead and reference to these boxes now so we can just turn off everything on or off at once, it's quite simple. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and find this, see if we can get it in here, I think it's options. So what we need to do is, because you can't see it at the moment, we need to make sure the vertical boxes are actually, um, you know, shown as variables. So if you go ahead and click the box, in the details panel, just make sure you go ahead and select is variable, so we can actually see it on the graph side. So go ahead and do that for the main menu buttons, uh, vertical box, and also the options one. Let's go back to graph. And you can see we've got our two vertical boxes here now. We should probably name these to make it easier. You might have done that already, but if you haven't, just go ahead and do it. I'm going to name this uh, main... So yeah, I'm going to name the first one main menu box, and the second one is going to be options box. Just like that. So now if we go into the graph, we can start doing this. So the first thing we need to do when you press the options button is we want to get rid of the main menu stuff. So drag in a reference to the main menu box, just press get, and hook that up to the target. And then we're going to go ahead and create another set visibility node, and we're going to use this to toggle on the visibility for the options box. So let's go ahead and do that. So options box, drag it in, get a reference, and then just drag it into the target. So now, when you go ahead and press launch, press save, selected, let it load for a second, but what you'll see is that when you go ahead and actually press that button, you're going to see the main menu options, uh, the main menu buttons disappear and the options ones show up. And we're going to be doing the same thing for going back to the main menu using the main menu button in a second. Sorry, I'm just trying to move it over onto the screen. There you go. So if you press options, click it, you can see the other stuff turns on. You can see that it hasn't disappeared the other, uh, made the other stuff disappear yet. That's because I forgot to change the visibility over here in set visibility. So change that to hidden 
and make sure the second one is visible. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go to the main menu button here and we're going to go ahead and do the same thing, but we're going to reverse it. So what I'm going to do is just going to copy and paste both of these in and hook them up like that. But this time we want to set this to visible and this one to hidden and that will reverse the whole thing. So now that's all set up, so it should go from one screen to another. Let's go ahead and test that out. It's very simple, but it should work. Once we've done this, we can start showing you how to add in the functionality for start game, quit game, and change the resolutions. And hopefully, you know, when I start showing you how to add in that functionality via console command and stuff, you should realize just how easy it is to add in additional features, add extra screens and all that cool stuff. So if I press options, this stuff shows up. If I press main menu, it goes back. Obviously you're going to want to move your button so it's in the middle of the screen as well. But anyway, the basic functionality. So when I press quit game, there's nothing that happens, so let's go ahead and set that up. So once again, you go to the button you want to work with and go to event, and we're going to create an event for it. Uh, we're going to use the event and we're going to fire something off. This time, we're just going to use a node called quit game. And then it's just going to close the whole window, finished, and that's it. So that's pretty simple. So that's that one done. The next one we're going to do is start game. That's also got a little node for that. Basically, basically what you're going to want to do when you actually start a game is simply open a level or load a level. And then from there, the game mode and everything is going to, you know, take over. So let's just type in load level or oh, sorry, open level. And then just like that. Now, what you need to do in here is go ahead and open, uh, put in a level name. If you don't have any levels to load, then, you know, pff, that's too bad. But if you do, the easiest way to find out the level names is just go to open, go wherever your levels are. For me, mine are going to be in third person BP and then third person example. So let's just go ahead and try and open that. Uh, so I'm just going to type it in exactly as it is, third person example map. And there we go, and that should work. So if we go ahead and press launch, we can go ahead and try that out and see if all of this stuff works. I think because at the moment, the third person example map is also the main menu, you're probably not gonna see it working properly, but either way, if you do have a proper level in there and you go ahead and press that button, it should work perfectly fine. So I press start game, it tries to load, you can see it freezes, but all it does is just open up the menu again. But either way, you can see it's working there. If you were to put something else in there, it will work. And we got our options screen, that works. Quick game, that will just close it all. So that's working too. So the next thing we need to do then is simply set up the resolution stuff. Now for option settings like this, most of this stuff, you can actually adjust using console commands. And that's what I'm gonna be showing you how to do. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for this button get the event, bring it into the graph, just like this. You can see I've got the name wrong for this, but that doesn't matter, it's a 1080 button. So what we're gonna do is just console command in here, execute console command, which is gonna tell it to type in that console command. These console commands can also be used, you know, just doing the dev stuff, if I press this little key and type in, you know, set res or set res and then 1920 by 1080 and it will all change. I'll show you that in a second. So let's just go ahead and set all of this stuff up. So the command you're going to want to put into here, obviously when the game's not running. So command is going to be set res 1920 by 1080. And then I'm going to do the same again for the next button. This one is the 1280 by 720 button. Add it in here, execute. I'm just going to copy and paste this three times just like that, and then I'm going to get the last reference for the button at the bottom, and then I'm just going to hook it up in here, and I'm just going to make sure this is all right. So this time, instead of, this one's going to be 640 by 480, this one is going to be the 1280 by 720, just go ahead and save that, compile it, do all of that cool stuff. Let's go ahead and press launch now and see if this actually works for you. It may take a few seconds to load as, you know, our menu is getting quite big now, the level's getting bigger, all of that cool stuff. Just give it a second to load and we should see that everything in our menu should actually begin to work now. So if we drag it in, if we go ahead and press options, we can go back to the main menu, we can change the screen resolution, you can see that's changing. 
Now, there is actually a whole bunch of documentation on the Unreal Engine website for actually showing you how you can change a bunch of the, um, you know, graphic settings using console commands. You got things for shadow quality, um, texture quality, lighting quality, all that cool stuff. Um, I'm probably going to leave a uh, link for that in the description, so if you want to check that out. And you can basically do the same thing as I'm doing here for the options. Uh, you know, you just add extra buttons for all these cool different settings, and then just add it in. But you can see all of this is working now, it's changing the resolution exactly how I want it to. But yeah, that's pretty much the basics of our main menu, there's really not much else I wanted to show you. Um, last thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and drag these buttons in here so they match up with the main menu. It's not going to collide because we've set up our visibility properly. So if I go ahead and press save, we should have a pretty nice looking main menu. So one last time, we're going to uh, go ahead and have a look at it. Let's give it a second, a couple seconds to open up. Okay, so here's our finished result. We've got our options menu. All the stuff looks really coherent. It's all in the right place. When we go ahead and press it, you know, it's changing the resolution. There's loads of cool stuff you can do, but that is everything. Go ahead and experiment with other console commands, other ways of changing things with your game through buttons and the events. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed these three videos. Um, I'm probably going to do some more stuff on, you know, controller-based inputs and stuff for main menus. But thanks for watching, comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.